So if you've ever used Fusion to create your own transitions or to use a transition template from a third party, you know the drill. You start by deciding where you want the center of the transition to be. Lift the second clip onto a new track. Move your playhead forward half the number of frames in the transition's duration. Drag the bottom clip right to meet your playhead. Cut the top clip at that position. Move your playhead back to where you want the transition to begin. Stretch the top clip left to meet the playhead. Cut the bottom clip at that position. Select both clips with your mouse. Right click and choose Create New Fusion Clip. Place your playhead over the new clip. Select the Fusion tab. Disconnect the Media In and Media Out nodes. Drag in a Fusion Settings file. Reconnect the two Media In nodes. Reconnect the Media Out node. Return to your timeline, let the transition render, and then you can play it in real time. And even when you're finished, if you decide you want to move your transition backward or forward, just a couple of frames, you've got to delete your Fusion clip and start from scratch. Or if you need to change the color correction or grading on one or both of the clips, you've got to delete your Fusion clip and start from scratch. Or if you just want to adjust the length of the transition to make it longer or shorter, you've got to delete your Fusion clip and start from scratch. Seriously? That's a heck of a lot of putzing around. What if you could simply drag your transition clip onto your timeline and be done? Now that would be game changing. Well, in this tutorial, you'll learn how to do exactly that. I'm David Power, and this is a DaVinci Resolve Power Tip. Now, as a side note, this tutorial makes use of the adjustment clip feature that was added to Resolve in version 16. It also makes use of some power bin functionality added in version 16.1. If you're using an older version of Resolve, I encourage you to upgrade. If you need to, pause the video, go grab the latest version, and install it right now. Oh, and I also want to mention, if it seems like there are a lot of steps in this tutorial, just remember, you're creating a reusable drag and drop transition. So this is a process you only have to do once per transition. Okay, here on the edit tab, I have two video clips on my timeline, and I've trimmed them down to where I want the transition to happen. Here's how we do it. Step one, create a power bin. If you're not familiar with power bins, you really need to be. Power bins are folders where you can organize and store frequently used clips like intros, outros, titles, and you guessed it, transitions. What's special about them is that anything you place in a power bin is available to all future projects with just a click. To access power bins, choose View from the main menu and select View Power Bins. With the media pool open, you'll see a group labeled Power Bins here on the left. I'll right click, select New Bin, and name it Transitions. Step 1B, create an empty dummy clip. So why is this step called 1B and not step 2? Well, it's because I'm not certain this step will be necessary in future versions of Resolve. Right now, as I'm making this tutorial, Resolve 16.1 is still in beta, and I found that unless you start the process with a clip that already lives in a power bin, your keyframes get messed up and your transition ends up being unusable. However, if you start by creating an empty dummy clip, dragging it to a power bin, dragging it back out to the timeline, and then creating the transition in the dummy clip, everything works perfectly. Strange, but true. So if you're using a version of Resolve newer than 16.1, just be aware this step may not be necessary. Okay, enough housekeeping. Here's what you need to do. Navigate to Effects Library, and under Toolbox, select Effects. Drag and drop an adjustment clip anywhere on your timeline. While it's not 100% necessary, I'm going to shorten this clip up to one second in length because that will be the default length of my transitions. You can make yours any length you want, and you can change it later if you need to. Next, in the Inspector pane, I'll rename the clip to Dummy, D-U-M-M-Y. I'll drag and drop the clip to my Transitions Power Bin, and delete the dummy clip on the timeline. Okay, let's move on. Step two, drag your dummy clip onto the timeline. Select the dummy clip you just copied to your power bin, drag it to the timeline, and drop it on a video track above the clips you want to transition between. So I'll start with my playhead where I want the two clips to meet. 
I'll hit the left arrow key 12 times because that's half a second at 24 frames per second. And I'll drag the dummy clip so it lines up with my playhead. Okay, believe it or not, the hard part is done. Step three, open the clip in Fusion. Make sure your playhead is somewhere above your transition clip and click on the Fusion icon to open the Fusion tab. The first thing you'll notice here is that there's a single media in note on the Fusion composition. You're probably used to seeing two media ins when you create a transition. Adjustment clips have a single media in node and it essentially contains whatever media is immediately below it on your timeline. If you recall, my transition clip is 24 frames long with the center at frame 12. So if I start with my playhead on the far left of the Fusion timeline and count ahead 11 frames, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, all you see is my first video clip. And when I reach frame 12, there's my second clip. And the second clip is visible in the viewer until the final or 24th frame of my adjustment clip. Make sense? Okay, let's move on to step four, create your transition. Now I wanna emphasize here, the focus of this tutorial isn't on the nuts and bolts of creating a transition. The focus is on making the transition reusable by building it inside an adjustment clip. So in this step, you can feel free to create a zoom, a wipe, or any other type of transition you can dream of. But for the purposes of this demo, I'm gonna quickly create a zoom in transition. The beauty is I can do this with a single node, and here's how it's done. Start by selecting the media in node with your mouse, hit shift and spacebar on your keyboard to open the tool dialog, type transform, select the transform tool and click add. Not surprisingly, this adds a transform node to your fusion composition and automatically connects it to both your media in and media out nodes. Next, we'll create some keyframes. Make sure your cursor is at the far left of the Fusion Viewer timeline. Open the Inspector pane, and to the right of the Size control, set a keyframe for the default value of 1.0. Next, move your cursor to the last frame of your first video clip. For me, on a 24 FPS timeline, that's 11 frames to the right. And here, I'll set a keyframe for a size value of 4.0. I'll move ahead one keyframe to the first frame of my second video clip and set another keyframe for a size of 0.5. Notice how this clip has now shrunk down to the center of the frame. Here's how we deal with that. For the edges parameter, open the drop down list and select mirror. Notice how that fills the frame on all sides with a mirror image of the center video clip. Because it's only on screen for a fraction of a second, this tricks the eye into seeing a smooth zoom where there really isn't a full frame to zoom into. Finally, move your cursor to the very end of your transition clip. That will be the first black frame after your mirrored video clip disappears. For me, that's frame 24. And here I'll set a final size keyframe with a value of 1.0. Just to make sure everything looks good, move your cursor to the far left of the timeline again and step through frame by frame. If you've done everything properly, you should see your first clip at full size. And as you step forward, the clip should zoom in more and more. As soon as you hit your center frame, it should quickly jump to the mirrored second clip. And as you continue to step forward, the mirrored clip should grow to fill the screen. So the guts of the transition is complete but let's crank it up a notch by smoothing out the keyframe paths. Let's open the spline editor, stretch it out to give it some space, select the size checkbox, and then click zoom to fit. I find this pinkish color difficult to see against black, so I'm gonna quickly change it to a fluorescent yellow. This is how your keyframe paths should look. Notice they're all straight lines at the moment. Start by clicking anywhere on the grid area, Type Control A on your keyboard to select all the visible keyframes, and then type F to flatten them out. Now let's stretch the spline handles one by one to smooth out the paths. Hold the Alt key on your keyboard and stretch this handle right to about here. Do the same for the rightmost handle and stretch it left. For the top and bottom keyframes, we won't type Alt. 
Just grab the top handle with your cursor and drag it down to about here. And do the reverse of that with the bottom keyframe handle. When you're done, your spline paths should look like this. You can adjust these to taste, but this is a great starting point. And let's close the spline editor. We'll do one last thing before we finish up, and that's this. With the transform node selected, click over to the settings tab here in the inspector pane, click the checkbox next to motion blur, and crank up the quality value to five. You can choose a higher number, but the higher the value, the more demand it puts on your CPU and GPU. So five is a good compromise. Now let's return to our timeline, give Fusion a few seconds to render the zoom effect, and play it back. All right, that looks good. Step five, label your transition. Just as we did earlier with the dummy clip, let's click on the transition to select it and open the inspector pane. Here in the upper right corner, you can give your transition a meaningful name. I'll call this one zoom in 24 frames. So now I can recognize this transition whenever I see it on a timeline in the future. Step six, add your transition to your power bin. Simply select your transition with your mouse and drag and drop it into your transitions folder. And we're done. Now at this point you might be thinking, hey dude, that's almost as many steps as the old method. Well, we can debate that, but this is where things get really interesting. Let's say I add a third video clip to my timeline and I wanna add a zoom in transition between the second and third clips. All I need to do is this. Grab the zoom in clip from the transitions bin, drag it onto the timeline above the second and third clips and line it up. Give it a couple of seconds to render. And boom, there's my transition with no additional work whatsoever. Best of all, now that it lives in a power bin, from now on, anytime I want to use this transition in any future project, it's as simple as opening the transitions bin, dragging the transition onto the timeline, lining it up with my footage, and bada boom, bada bing. As I said earlier, for DaVinci Resolve, these features are game changers. Well, there you have it. If you're using DaVinci Resolve version 16.1 or higher, you now know how to use adjustment clips to create reusable transitions you can drag and drop onto your timeline in two seconds flat. If you found this tutorial useful and you'd like to see more, you know what to do. Once again, I'm David Power, and I'll see you in the next Power Tip.